The following video does not constitute financial advice. Talk to a professional before making any investment decision. The Australian property market is in a bubble. The largest housing bubble on record, according to some. The median property now costs eight times the median wage. That means if you are on a median full-time wage of roughly $82,000 a year, it would take you eight years to pay off your home, assuming you dedicated 100% of your salary just to paying off your mortgage. What about tax and interest, Matty? Great point, short bus. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later too. Property captures the minds of Australians unlike any other asset. We have TV shows about buying homes, renovating homes, living in homes, and playing house. It's not hard to see how Australians were fooled into thinking property was the be-all and end-all of wealth. Unfortunately, it's not. And now the nation has to suffer for our blind devotion. We need to ask how we got into this mess and what we can do when the property bubble inevitably pops. Not just because it's important to prepare yourself, but also because we need to ensure this kind of thing never happens again. This is an inflation adjusted graph of Australian property prices from 1880 through to 2005. As you can see, prices were on a relatively slow but steady downward trend until around 1950. Since the 1950s, prices have increased dramatically, and where it was once possible to have a family, four kids, and a nice house on just one income, this has become a pipe dream. Prices just kept going up leading people to think house prices only ever rise, and you can't blame them. Most people alive today have only ever lived through steady growth in property values. People around the world have made millions telling everyone property is boss. It's not unique to Australia by any means. We need to inject some reality into this fantasy. In 2017, the median home cost $900,000. Assuming a whopping 20% deposit of $180,000 and assuming just a 5% interest rate, your final loan repayment, including interest, is almost $4,000. In Australia, a well-paid individual earning $100,000 a year takes home just $6,000 per month after tax. That doesn't leave much for food, bills or recreational activity. If interest rates were to increase to just 9.5%, payments would also increase to more than $6,000, and the extent of the problem is made clear. Fair to say, it's become significantly difficult to enter the Australian property market. To learn how it all started, we need to go back to 1911 and the formation of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Originally a national bank owned by the government, it was just like any other bank, taking savings deposits and making loans. Parliament retained the power to make currency until 1924 when it handed the CBA power to issue banknotes. In 1945, following the end of the Second World War, Parliament passed the Commonwealth Bank Act and the Banking Act, formally granting it power over monetary, foreign exchange and banking policy. It is no coincidence that five years later, Australia saw a huge jump in house prices, followed by nearly 60 years of asset growth. This is the true origin of Australia's housing bubble. In 1959, Parliament passed the Reserve Bank Act, formally separating the private banking interest of the Commonwealth Bank and establishing the RBA as Australia's official central bank. The Charter unironically states, it is the duty of the Reserve Bank Board, within the limits of its powers, to ensure that the monetary and banking policy of the bank is directed to the greatest advantage of the people of Australia, and that the powers of the bank are exercised in such a manner as, in the opinion of the Reserve Bank Board, will best contribute to the stability of the currency of Australia, the maintenance of full employment in Australia, and the economic prosperity and welfare of the people of Australia. 
Like almost every government program, the central bank utterly fails in its primary task. It is required to direct monetary and banking policy to the greatest advantage of the people of Australia, yet its very existence is to our extreme disadvantage. Since the 1950s, the RBA has flooded the economy with money, driving down the value of our currency and driving up the cost of housing. It should come as no surprise that this ultimately increases inequality as all centrally planned economies do. Successive governments extolled the virtues of owning your home and the media backed them up with an endless supply of pro-housing propaganda. It's become easier and easier to get larger and larger home loans. Originally, first home buyers required a 20% deposit for approval, but these days loans are approved with a mere 5% down. The government even offers taxpayer funded grants to help first home buyers, meaning people need very little to enter the housing Ponzi. Don't forget state government roles in this bubble, Matty. It wasn't just the federal government. Patience, I'm getting to it. As the professor said, it's not just federal policies that have pushed up housing prices. State governments are also explicitly assisting in inflating the ever-growing bubble. Excessive regulations around new home production and restrictive urban growth boundaries reduce the supply of new housing and thus drive up prices. It's so bad even the central bank have expressed concerns over the policy of urban containment and its effect on housing prices. It estimates that urban boundaries push prices up in capital cities between $150,000 and $500,000. The market responded to these boundaries and the increasing prices by ramping up construction of apartments to the point where capital cities are now experiencing a glut, not to mention a huge increase in congestion. This large increase in supply of homes is starting to put downward pressure on prices. It could be what ultimately pops the bubble. If you aren't already angry at the current state of affairs, there's an even more insidious aspect to Australia's housing bubble. Mass immigration. Since the year 2000, migration into Australia has skyrocketed from already excessive rates. These immigrants aren't from what you'd call culturally compatible nations either. Chinese investors have flooded the property market and the country, not only pushing up housing prices, but adding to the demographic replacement of ethnic Australians. In fact, the majority of migrants to Australia in 2017 were from Asian, Middle Eastern or African regions. This isn't just terrible for our nation in terms of city overpopulation, wages and house prices, this arguably constitutes a government supported foreign invasion of Australian territory and thus is illegal under section 119 of the Australian constitution. The Commonwealth shall protect every state against invasion and on the application of executive government of the state against domestic violence. The Australian government never put mass non-European migration to a referendum. Thus, our migration system since the late 1960s is almost certainly unconstitutional. It is indeed disturbing, but this video is about the housing bubble. We can discuss our treasonous elite another day. Fine. I can't make a video on Australia's housing bubble without mentioning the amazing work of economics superblog, Macro Business. I'll leave links to three fantastic articles in the description for an extensive rundown of the situation. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to quote from an article by founding editor David Llewellyn Smith, otherwise known as Houses and Holes. Australian property bubble on a scale like no other. In 2003, the bubble first threatened to burst as the Reserve Bank raised interest rates. But the bubble was rescued by the combined forces of demand-side fiscal stimulus for first home buyers in the form of large cash grants and the arrival of the Chinese commodity boom that flooded the economy with people and income. The government of the day learned its lesson and economic reform has been dead ever since. 
Not only are they running unsustainable deficits into looming sovereign downgrades, they have sustained historically very high rates of immigration to attempt to backfill and support property prices. These levels have been so aggressive in the major eastern cities, which are now projecting a near doubling of their populations within 40 years, that elections are now routinely won and lost on issues of choked infrastructure and a vehemently anti-immigration movement is afoot in the polity. Younger generations are also boiling over with anger at being locked out of housing markets. A full half of first home buyers rely upon parents for equity and their numbers have collapsed to just 12% of total sales. Before the year 2000, the Australian economy was a vibrant mix of world-leading productivity growth, liberalised tradable sectors balanced between commodities, services and manufacturing, solid household wealth, a reasonable external position, a clean public balance sheet and reliable institutions. Today, it is a widely imbalanced propertocracy with enormous offshore debts, a polity soaked by a Goebbels-like property propaganda machine, and a government run by realty carpetbaggers willing to sell their children to Chinese communists so long as they pick up a three-bedroom apartment along with little Johnny. In a world replete with bubbles, rarely has one been quite so complete. I strongly suggest everyone read all three articles linked, not to mention the rest of the content on the Macro Business blog. It's great, and a subscription only costs about $16.50 per month. That's just over 50 cents a day. Shill it more, Betty! How much are they paying you? Um, nothing actually, but I'd, I wouldn't say no to a free subscription for the free advertising. Good luck with that. It's important to note that the increase in house prices has not accompanied higher rental returns. Thus, so-called investors are reliant on ever-increasing prices in order to gain a return on their capital. When incomes don't justify investment, it is no longer investment, but speculation. The Australian housing bubble is going to crash. It's not a matter of if, but when, and how badly we will all suffer. It may well have popped already, but the latest downturn could well be a blip if the government manages to find some new source of money to add to the Ponzi pie. It could last for decades more, ensuring the ultimate crash is far worse than it would have been had the bubble popped earlier. One thing is certain, when it does finally crash, there will be people who loudly proclaim the bubble to be the fault of free market capitalism. The far left will always look for any excuse to attack their mortal enemy, and that means blaming the market for the stupidity of central planners. Nothing could be further from the truth. This housing bubble started with the government mandated formation of a centrally planned financial system. Governments, both state and federal, then made the problem far worse through urban boundaries, first homeowner grants, mass immigration, and generally pushing people into housing investment. If Australia had a truly free market, this bubble never would have formed, because bubbles are invariably the result of state force. Even Dutch tulip mania in the mid-17th century was started by state enterprise the Dutch East India Company. Indeed, all recessions are the result of malinvestment that ultimately must correct itself. This is a key part of Say's law. When you incorrectly direct economic resources into one product at the expense of others, it eventually results in firms taking losses. When this malinvestment is economy-wide and directed by the state, you have the perfect recipe for a bubble and ultimate economic collapse. If we are to avoid bubbles like this in the future, we need to get the state out of the economy entirely. Only a truly free market can allocate resources efficiently and correctly. Over more than a hundred years, the Australian government started and grew one of, if not the biggest asset bubbles the world has ever seen. Prepare yourself accordingly. As for what to do when the bubble ultimately pops, I'll let Samuel L. Jackson answer that one. Hold on to your butts. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video around to spread the truth. Thanks for watching, and I'll see ya when I see ya. Property is theft. Says your face! Be nice to the NPC, short bus. He hasn't got a soul, remember?
There is no such thing as a soul. Religion is the opiate of the masses. What am I saying? Get rid of this idiot. Pfft. Bloody NPCs all over the place.